Hi everyone, this is Mrs. GA, and today we're going to talk about graphing absolute value functions. So we're going to start off with some basics for absolute value functions. Um, so if we have um, the parent function, y equals negative x, let's make a really quick t-chart just to see what this function lo looks like. So if I use the following x values, I get the following y values. And if you plot these points, um, it looks like a V-shaped graph that is really comprised of two separate linear functions. So that's why we can rewrite any absolute value function as a piecewise function. So you'll notice that our transition point between this and this is always going to be at the vertex of our graph, which in this case is zero. Um, so you can see everything to the right of zero is defined by the equation y equals x. It's just um, has a y-intercept at zero and follows a slope of one over one. But you can see to the left of the origin, um, my graph is defined by the equation y equals negative x. It has a slope of negative 1. So the piecewise function here would look like this. We would say negative x for all values x less than 0 and positive x for values x will say greater than or equal to 0. And it doesn't matter which one you include um, because they are going to um, meet at the same point every time. So to generalize, um, the way that you define the equation moving to the right, it's always going to be the positive version of what's happening inside your absolute value function. The way you define what's happening on the left is actually the negative version of what's happening inside your absolute value. So let's see if we can apply this to slightly more complex equations. Okay, let's look at this um, first example together. So we have f of x equals absolute value of x minus 3 plus 4. So I can tell by looking at this that it's going to be upward facing. It will have a vertex at 3, 4. But we want to describe it as a piecewise function. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make a little number line just to help us describe the different regions. I know that my cutoff point is going to be at 3, at positive 3, because that's where my vertex falls. So let's describe um, this side as x greater than 3 and this side as x less than 3. So remember we said uh, moving to the right, we can define the function just by using the positive version of whatever's happening here. So it just stays positive x minus 3 plus 4, and then we just combine like terms. So we have x plus 1. Now, moving to the left, we're going to take the negative version of what's happening inside our absolute values. So this actually becomes negative x, and this will become plus 3. So we get y equals negative x plus 3, and then we still have that plus 4, which is unchanged. It's just the opposite of what you see inside your absolute value. So we have the function negative x plus 7. So now that we have our um, two intervals defined with different equations, we can write this as a piecewise function. So f of x will equal negative x plus 7 for all x values less than 3. And it will equal positive x plus 1 for all x values greater than or equal to 3. And now we can sketch a quick graph. So again, our cutoff is at 3. Um, so I'm going to substitute 3 right here, um, and I get uh, 3, 4. So that will be my starting point, which we should know to be the vertex. And then moving to the left, it's just a line that has a y-intercept at 7 and a slope of negative 1. So I can just follow my slope going backwards, and you get something that looks like this. And now um, to the right of, of 3, um, I'll start by plugging in 3. 3 plus 1 is 4, so back to our vertex. And then this part of our function has a slope of positive 1. So you can see that we get exactly what we would expect um, by splitting it up into a piecewise function. 
Okay, let's try another one together. Um, so we can see here um, that we have a downward facing absolute value function that will have a vertex at negative five, negative one. So in this case, um, our cutoff point is going to be at negative five. So we'll have values to the left of negative five and we'll have values to the right of negative five. So remember for the values to the right, it's just the positive version of what's inside your absolute value. And then we're just going to distribute and combine like terms. So here we have negative x minus six. And then remember the way we find the values to the left, we actually do the opposite values of what's inside here. So it's actually negative x minus five. And then we have minus one. So be really careful here. This negative is still here. This negative one is still here. A negative times a negative is a positive. So positive x, and then we have plus five minus one, which is plus four. So there's the two pieces of our function. So now we can write it as a piecewise function. So our equation to the left of negative five is x plus four. And to the right of negative five, it's negative x minus six. And now all we need to do is sketch a graph. So again, for piecewise functions, we always start at our transition point. Um, so I'm going to substitute negative five here. Um, negative five plus four is negative one. So I have negative five, negative one. And this portion of my function follows a slope of positive 1, which looks like this. So remember, we always read the slope going from left to right. So this has a slope of positive 1. Let's substitute this here. So we have negative negative 5, which is positive 5 minus 6 is negative 1. And this part has a slope of negative 1. So I'm going to go down 1, right 1. And it looks like this. So again, um, we do have a downward facing um, absolute value function with a vertex at negative 5, negative 1, just like we expected. All right, so now I'm going to ask you to pause the video and give this example a try. Okay, so let's check here. Um, in this one, our transition point is going to be at positive 3. So here you can see I split it up into two portions. For the positive portion, it's essentially the same equation, just absolute values become parentheses. But for the portion to the left, remember we take the opposite of whatever's inside our absolute value sign. So negative x plus 3. So it's the negative version of the absolute value. And here's the two um, equations, and this is what our graph looks like. All right, so now we're going to talk about how to graph a, um, the sum and difference of functions. So here in this first example, we have f of x equals x plus absolute value of x. So here we're doing the sum of a linear and an absolute value. So we're going to need to add up their individual um, equations, which means I am going to need to um, define this as a piecewise function. So here's my interval graph and I know that my critical point is going to occur at zero that's where my vertex is now everything to the right of zero absolute value of x is defined um, by the function just x everything to the left of zero it's defined by the function negative x okay and now I'm going to need to add that to my linear function x which I know this seems a little bit redundant, this is always defined by positive x, no matter what boundary you're in. Because it is linear, it's constant. So I'm just essentially going to add vertically, and what I have left is the absolute value of x plus x. So if I add in this first region, negative x plus x is 0. And if I add in the second region, x plus x, is 2x. So I can use this to write our function as a piecewise function. So we have 0 for all x values less than 0, 
and we have the function 2x for all x values greater than or equal to 0. So let's sketch a graph of what this looks like. So again, everything to the left of x equals 0 is going to be defined by this constant function. And everything to the right will be defined by the function 2x. So it looks like this. So remember, to um, find the sum of two different functions, you really are just adding up their equations. It's just for something like an absolute value graph, we know that for different intervals, it has a different equation. So make sure you define this as a piecewise function before you add up your equations. All right, let's try one now that's a little bit trickier. So here um, we have the sum of two different absolute value functions. So first, let's see if we can describe um, absolute value of x. So I know here that my critical point is going to be at 0. And I know everything to the right of 0 will be defined as just x. Everything to the left of 0 will be negative x. Um, now let's look at the absolute value function of x minus 2. So I know this will have a critical point at 2. So everything to the right of it will be defined just by x minus 2. Everything to the left will be defined as the opposite of this, so negative x plus 2. And now we're essentially going to add vertically. But what you'll notice here is that we actually have three different regions because we have 0 and 2, so that creates these three regions. So I'm just going to be adding vertically um, with whatever function is defined in this interval. So I see everything to the left of 0. My first function is defined by negative x. My second is defined by negative x plus 2. So if I add these up, I'm left with negative 2x plus 2. Now if you look at everything in between right here, you can see that my top function is defined by x, my bottom function is defined by negative x plus 2. So I'm actually going to add up these two equations. So x plus negative x plus 2 is just 2. And in the region to the right of 2, my top function is defined by x, the bottom is defined by x minus 2. So if you combine like terms, you get 2x minus 2. So again, you just need to make sure that you're using the correct um, equation for the correct intervals. And then you're just adding up the different equations. So let's write our final um, solution as a piecewise function before we graph. So we have the equation 2x plus 2 for all x values less than 0. We have the constant function 2 for any values between and including 0 and 2. And then we have the function 2x minus 2 for all x values greater than 2. And now we can sketch a graph. OK, again, for piecewise functions, we always start by substituting. So if I substitute x equals 0, I get 2. So that's my starting point. And then this function has a slope of negative 2, so I can follow that going backwards. And I have this portion of my graph. Then I have a constant function from 0 to 2 at y equals 2, so it looks like this. And if I substitute 2 into this portion, I am at 2, and then I follow my slope of 2 from there, and I get something that looks like this. And there you have it. So again, make sure to define each individual function as a piecewise function, and then you just add up the individual equations according to the different intervals. All right, so now I'm going to ask that you pause the video and um, give this problem a try. We'll check in just a few seconds. Okay, so here you can see that I have the sum of these two different absolute value functions. 
So for absolute value of x plus 4, I can define it in this way. So x plus 4 to the right, negative x minus 4 to the left. For absolute value of x, it's x to the right, negative x to the left. And here's my three intervals. So for this interval, again, I'm adding up negative x minus 4 and negative x to give me this. For my middle interval, I'm using this portion and this portion to get this portion. And for my right, I'm using this plus this to get this. So here's my piecewise, and here's what the graph looks like. Okay, now we're going to try to find a difference um, together. So same idea, uh, we just have to be extra careful with the subtraction. Um, so we have absolute value of x, and then we're going to be subtracting the absolute value of x plus 5. So I know absolute value of x is going to have a critical point at 0. So the way I would define this function to the right of that is just x. And to the left, it's the opposite of my absolute value, so negative x. For x, um, absolute value of x plus 5, I have that critical point at negative 5. That's where my vertex is. So to the right of that, it's just my absolute value, so I have x plus 5. And to the left, it's the negative version of this, so negative x minus 5. And now I need to do my combination for all three intervals, so between negative 5 and 0. So remember, again, we are subtracting. So for this first um, interval to the left of negative 5, I'm doing negative x minus negative x, which gives you 0, and then minus negative 5, which gives you 5. So be really, really careful. Um, if you need to, you can even kind of show it out on the side. So we have negative x minus negative x minus 5. If you distribute, um, we have negative x plus x plus 5. So be really careful. We are subtracting. Okay, for this middle interval, I can see for the top one, I'm using this negative x. For my second one, I'm using x plus 5 because it's right in this middle zone. And I'm going to subtract. So negative x minus x is negative 2x minus 5 is negative 5. So it's negative 2x minus 5. And again, if you need to, write it out on the side. For my last zone, I'm doing x minus x plus 5. Um, x minus x is 0. Minus 5 is negative 5. So these different functions will define my piecewise function. So I have f of x equals 5 for all x values less than negative 5 negative 2x minus 5 for all values between and including negative 5 and 0 and then the constant function 5 for all x values greater than 0. So now all we have to do is graph it. Okay, so we always start at our critical points. So for um, to the left of negative 5 we have a constant function at 5 so that is going to look like this. Oops, sorry, I'm right here. There you go. Um, now I'm going to look at my linear portion. So if I substitute negative 5, I get 10 minus 5, which is 5. So I pick up right where I left off, and then I'm going to follow that slope of negative 2 until I reach x equals 0. So I have the linear portion. And then for everything to the right of 0, I have a constant function at negative 5. So I have this. There you have it. All right, let's try one more together. Um, here we have f of x equals absolute value of 1 minus x minus absolute value of x plus 2. So before um, we do anything else, I'm going to look at this portion of our function. And I'm going to rewrite it and see if we can simplify it a little bit before we try to graph. So if I swap the order they're in, it looks like this. Now it's kind of strange for us to have a horizontal stretch or shrink, um, and we are going to want to factor that out within our absolute value sign, so we have this. And now we can simplify this, because this is saying negative 1 times x minus 1, and we know that the absolute value of negative 1 is just positive 1. So this will actually simplify to this. So I'm going to be using this in my function. 
and then this. So this will make it a little bit easier for us to define our different portions. Okay, so again, we're going to do absolute value of x minus 1, and then we're going to subtract the absolute value of x plus 2. So here I see that we'll have a critical point at 1. So to the right, um, it's the positive version of my absolute value, so x minus 1. And to the left, it's the negative, so it becomes negative x positive 1, or it's the opposite version of this. Now let's see if we can define the next portion of our function. So we have a critical point, the vertex at x equals negative 2. So to the right, um, my equation stays the same. It's x plus 2. To the left, it's the negative version, so negative x minus 2. And let's see what our resulting equations are. So I have three intervals again. Let's start with this first one. So I'm going to be doing this minus this. So I'll start with x's. Negative x minus negative x is 0x. And then here I have 1 minus negative 2, which is positive 3. In this middle zone, I can see that I'm going to use negative x plus 1, and I'm going to subtract x plus 2. So I'm using the equations that are defined in this region. So negative x minus x is negative 2x. 1 minus 2 is negative 1. And last, in this zone, I'll use this and this, and I'm going to subtract. So x minus x is 0. Negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3. So these are the different pieces of our piecewise function. So we have a constant function for all values less than negative 2. We have a linear function for the values between negative 2 and 1. And we have another constant for all values greater than 1. So for here, let's sketch a graph. OK, so again, I have a constant function at negative 2. That function is at 3. So I'm going to look like this. And then for this um, interval, if I substitute negative 2, I get 3. So I do start right here. And I'm going to follow my slope of negative 2 until I get to 1, which is right here. And then at 1, you can see that it becomes a constant function at negative 3. So it is still continuous. So again, just be careful when you see something like this. Remember, the simplified version of that is actually absolute value of x minus 1. All right, here's your last one. Go ahead and pause the video and give it a try, and we will check your answers in just a few seconds. OK, let's have a look here. So again, I define my equations uh, for each absolute value in different pieces. So x plus 4, negative x minus 4, x minus 6, negative x plus 6. And then you subtract them. So you should get negative 10 in this region, 2x minus 2 in this region, and 10 in this region. And then we turn that into our piecewise function, and the graph looks like this. All right, that is all for today's video. Thank you so much for watching.